Tyrannosaurus rex ruled the land. Sharks swam the seas. When the great whales evolved, new predators arose. Among them, Cacaradon megalodon, patriarch of the white shark clan. Evolution has given us sharks that live today much as their ancient relatives lived during the time of the dinosaurs. Masterful predators who monitor the ecology of the oceans, ridding the seas of the weak and wounded. Creatures who know no enemies in their natural habitat. We are now in the latest chapter in a 400 million year saga, and sharks have found an enemy, a human enemy. There has been little human contact with sharks until this century. But the more we discover the food and fun the oceans offer, the more we enter the shark's environment and into a one-sided competition for the role of the apex predator of the seas. Before we accidentally close the evolutionary chapter on sharks, there is much to learn about these magnificent creatures and how they fulfill their assigned role in nature's grand scheme. to the bridge. Routes for you to explore include the food chain, sharks and humans, what is a shark, and shark trivia. The reference library and help are also available here. Open the hatch to exit the program. Alright, so um, let's get started. Um, let's start with the food chain. Alright, so um, so uh, this is uh, basically talking about how um, um, the food chain, how it works, um, what happens when something is taken away or something is added in. All right, let's uh, see what's uh, sunlight, phytoplankton, zooplankton, small fish, large fish, apex predators, and pollution. Let's click, click on the uh, uh, apex predators. Just as the lions and tigers patrol the jungles, seeking out the slowest, weakest, and the most vulnerable of the land animals, the large sharks patrol the oceans. Evolution has equipped these sharks with the strength, speed, and teeth necessary to perform their role efficiently. These giants are the apex predator, the top of the ocean food chain. They feed on the large fish, sometimes seals and seabirds and promote the health of the other fish populations through a process of natural selection. It is impossible to predict exactly what would happen if the apex predators cease to exist. Although large fishes are not well equipped to seek out weak and injured prey, similar to sharks, some species of large fish might assume the apex predator role, causing the large fish population to expand. For a short time, these fish, which are particularly popular with the fishing industry, might be more plentiful. However, based on experience with land animals, the increased numbers of big fish would quickly deplete their food source. The small fish and the large fish populations would crash. It could take decades, even centuries, for the large fishes to replace themselves. The small fishes and crustaceans remaining would make barely a dent in the zooplankton population. These tiny creatures might thrive, even increase, until there are so many that their food source, the phytoplankton, is depleted. If that happened, 
zooplankton, including the larvae of future small fishes, would starve. That's just sad. Anyway, um, let's go to menu. Uh, go back. Alright, I'm just going to go to the lef reference library. Um, uh, glossary, title index, shark index. Because I want to show you something that I... show you a shark that I didn't even know existed. Here it is. A green lantern shark. Why is it called that? Because it belongs to a group of fish called... I mean, group of sharks called lantern sharks. And, um... It has bioluminescence, which is green. Just want to show you something I learned from this game. Uh, these are like movies. I want to show you some, show you what the trivia is like. It's shark trivia, the game of choice where you find out whether you sink or swim as a shark expert. And now, live and in person from Sherman's Lagoon, your host, Sherman. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, now, here's the first question. The spiral valve is found in a shark's A. Intestine B. Heart C. Eye I'm gonna guess intestine. Way to go! I've played this game before, so... They, there's never, it, it never ends, basically. Um, I guess there might be an end, I don't know, but it, it repeats the same questions over and over. And I've, I've, uh, gotten the hang of it. Despite their name, oceanic white-tipped sharks, A, have no white on their bodies, B, have black-tipped fins as juveniles, C, live in estuaries. Some of the... Some of these pictures give you clues, so it's easy to answer them. Aye, aye, Captain. When a whale shark is born, it is... A. Already about five feet long. B. Small enough to fit inside of a football. C. As large as a person. I don't really remember this one. I'll just guess B. I thought I hooked you that time, but you slipped by. You're right. Good. The largest known victim of a shark attack is... Alright, now let's watch one of the movies. Shark Tales. These are interesting. Since the first human sighting of a dorsal fin cutting the water, sharks have inspired lore and legend. Select a story by clicking on an image. All right, so uh, there's um, Kamahoa Lee, -e, um, Shark and the Hare, Jonah and the Whale, Marshall Islands, Murder Witness. I'll click on the murder witness one. Dateline April 1935, Sydney, Australia. A shark in a shark uncovers a murder. It goes like this. When Albert Hobson pulled up his fishing line, the small shark he'd hooked had been swallowed by a large, very much alive, tiger shark. Hobson and his brother pulled the catch ashore and delivered the live shark to Coogee Aquarium. Sharks are common in Australia, but not many people actually get a good look at them, so the attraction was very popular. A week after its capture, the shark astonished onlookers by regurgitating the contents of its stomach, including a man's tattooed arm with a rope tied around the wrist. Examination by a local surgeon indicated the arm had not been severed by a shark, it had been separated from the body by a knife. Thanks to the tattoo and reconstructed fingerprints, 
police identified the arm as belonging to one James Smith, billiard parlour owner. Sydney police have pieced together the crime this way. A murdered man had several arrests for illegal betting and was thought to be involved in some shady business deals with a wealthy boat builder, Reginald Holmes. Smith was last seen in the company of Patrick Brady at a cottage along the coast. The landlord reported a trunk and some rope missing after the men left the cottage and there was some foul-smelling liquid left behind in a can, maybe blood. Brady was arrested for murder, and while he was being questioned, the boat builder Holmes was found racing around Sydney Harbour with a bullet in his head, muttering, Jimmy Smith is dead, I'm almost dead, and there's only one left. Holmes recovered, only to be murdered after his release from hospital. But back to the shark. Police theorised that Smith's body, all except the arm, which probably didn't fit, was disposed of in the trunk. The arm was tied to a weight and thrown into the sea. As it floated near the bottom of the sea, the small shark swallowed the arm whole, biting through the rope, and both were soon swallowed by the tiger shark. As the only available witness to the murder of Smith, the tiger shark was killed in the hope that stomach contents would yield more evidence but there was nothing but a few fish bones. With only the severed arm as evidence, no one could be convicted of the Smith murder or the murder of Holmes. But the testimony of the shark did lead to one of the most fascinating unsolved murder mysteries in the annals of crime in Australia. Interesting. Anyway, I'll go back to the main menu. Uh, um, let's see, let's pick one to choose. I'll pick sight. If you encounter a shark in the water, don't count on it having poor vision. Sharks see very well. In some situations, they see better than we do. If we drive very fast, the buildings along the road become rather a blur because we do not store each image. A shark does record the individual images. We know this from laboratory studies done by Dr. Sam Gruber and his students at the University of Miami. They found that the lemon shark's ability to distinguish between rapidly changing images like a flickering light is much better than most fishes and as good as ours. Sharks have well-developed visual systems that differ according to the needs of the various species. Dr. Robert Huter developed his interest in shark vision as a student. And as the director of the Center for Shark Research at Moat Marine Laboratory, his investigation continues. People often ask how well sharks can see. And the answer to that is that their eyes are adapted very well for the particular habitat in which they live. Their sensitivity, which is the ability to see very dim light, is extremely high, perhaps ten times the sensitivity of the human eye, which means that they can see a light that's ten times dimmer than the dimmest light that a person can see. This means that they may be able to actually use vision at night and hunt by starlight. It is very difficult to conduct field studies with sharks, as you can see. But this work and laboratory studies prove that the species studied see well in all light conditions. They can see color, and they can distinguish between shapes. Again, Dr. Huter explains. Their acuity, which is the ability to discriminate very fine patterns, is about average. It's about as good as the marine environment will allow, and about as good as they need to function visually in the marine environment. Their range of visibility extends out to the range in which the water visibility will allow. And they can see objects up very close to the head. It's interesting to note that the eye of a lemon shark focuses the image slightly behind the retina, making them a bit far-sighted. The image focuses right on the retina for tiger sharks and bull sharks. The ability to focus seems to be characteristic of each species study, but who knows? Maybe it changes with age. Okay, now let's go back to the main menu. 
So anyway, uh, that's my review. Oh wait, which? Oh yeah, that's right. So anyway, that's my review of the game. Um, what do I think of it? It's good. Um, so anyway, that's my review, and uh, I'll see you next time with more reviews of CD-ROM games on my Windows.